Hi, I have a headache and I'm also very depressed, but today is March 31st, which means it's Trans Day of Visibility. So I wanted to make a video for my fellow transes to like help you trans your genders. So that's what that's what we're doing today. So this is not one of those like 10 tips to help you pass as male <laughs> type of videos because obviously I don't even pass as male so like I'm not gonna like be telling you how to do it. I don't even know how to do it. But what I do know is that I have been out and about as a trans for almost four years and um, I've learned some things and here are some tips that I never saw in one of those YouTube videos those FTM guide videos. Um, these are things I learned all on my own. And so I'm here to share them with you. So whether you're a binary trans man, non-binary trans man, just a trans masculine individual, if you're trying to escape a girl, this video is for you. And obviously I'm pre-T, pre-op, so these tips are like for my fellow pre-everything dudes. But you know, if you're on testosterone, if you have had surgeries like this could also be useful like I'm talking about all sorts of things not just like things like you, you can look at what I'll be talking about but um yeah let's just let's just get into the tips you can obviously skip to whatever you want down here I should have the time code stamps but let's let's get into it so tip number one is this stuff this um the brand I use is called Regain but this is a chemical called minoxidil you see that I'll, I'll probably put it on screen but minoxidil what minoxidil is is this is basically supposed to help cis men help with balding patches so this is meant for hair growth on your actual head but this is not only a tip for trans men but any man who wants a beard on his face or any mask non-binary person you can just put this shit on your face and it'll grow hair on your face like it can grow hair anywhere so um, you can't really tell. I've been using it for about uh, two months on and off. It's only really worked on my sideburns here. That's where it's only visible. I'm naturally blonde, so obviously it's not really that visible. Like, obviously there is more hair. I'll put up, like, a picture here where it's, like, good lighting to show you. When you're pre teeth, all this really does is amplify, like, peach fuzz. Like, and then obviously, like, sideburns on the sides. If you have naturally like really dark hair, it can look very visible and work really well. Obviously, if you have naturally light hair, it's not super helpful. And then if you are on testosterone and you do have a patchy beard, this can also help because plenty of cis men use this to fill out their beards. Like this is something that will legitimately help you. So this can be used for anyone, whether you're on testosterone or not. If you're pre-T, this will really only work if you have naturally dark hair. And I mean, I could dye my beard hair, but like, I don't know if you can see it or how well it looks. I'll, I'll have a picture like showing. It's just like, it just makes your peach fuzz much more prominent. I forgot to say this in the video, but when you're applying this to your face, it promotes hair growth everywhere. So while taking it, my eyebrows have gotten just a little bit thicker. I've noticed a little bit more hair growth on my arms and stuff as you can see I have blonde hair so you can't really tell but like when you take this you do get slightly more hair growth just everywhere in general so not a lot but like just a little bit more so that you should also know that um and I'm honestly it, it might even work better for me if I was consistent with applying it because you're supposed to put it on twice a day I barely can even remember to put it on once a day so that's probably part of my issue and it's also it can also be pretty expensive that's the other thing about this is it's pretty expensive but I would highly recommend just trying it especially if you have darker hair like if you have like dark brown black hair this will definitely work for you this this will work for you but if you are if you do have lighter hair it's a hit or miss if you're pretty that is if you're on tea this will like 1000% help you like that's what it does like you can go watch videos of like cis guys who use this because like a lot of cis men use this because they also want full beards so yeah first tip is minoxidil the second tip is ebay this is specifically for like if you don't have a lot of masculine clothing and since we're in a pandemic there's not a lot of shopping going on but ebay has really cheap clothes ebay is literally an online thrift store and and like no one talks about it and honestly they shouldn't so that stays our little secret but ebay 
you can get such cheap clothing all you have to do is when you're like sorting for stuff sort by use like don't look at any of the new stuff sort by use and you can even set it to like under ten dollars or whatever so you can literally find like such cheap clothes like let me show you this this denim jacket with like embroidery on the back i got for like 15 pounds which is like 20 dollars so like this is pretty good it's also huge it's like literally an xxl i got both of these fun like pattern button-ups these are both like four pounds each which is like six dollars so that's really good like both of these each were just like six dollars this leather jacket which i literally wear almost every single day i can't really wear it anymore because it's spring but this was like 17 pounds which again is around like 20 or something dollars so like what i'm saying is you can get very cheap masculine clothing if you don't have a lot and then like also if you have a lot of like feminine clothing that you want to like get rid of because you don't wear it anymore you can sell it on ebay and then make money to buy more masculine clothing although if you still wear your feminine clothing good for you that's cool number three this is if you're going to take away anything from this video i beg of you take away this do not wear a backwards baseball hat. You look so stupid. It doesn't look cool. It doesn't help you pass. It makes you pass as a fucking idiot. That's what you pass as. It looks so dumb. Literally no one on this planet has put on a backwards baseball hat and looked cool. That's just not something you can do. Don't do it. I know you're tempted to do it, but I beg of you do not do it. It's not a cute look. Like a beanie, wear a beanie. A beanie, its purpose is to keep you warm. So just wear a beanie, a baseball hat. You know its purpose. Its purpose is to keep the sun out of your eyes. And if you're wearing it backwards, then it serves no purpose other than making you look like a frat boy. Is that what you want to be? You want to be a stupid little frat boy? Well, guess what? You're pre-teen. You're fucking 14. You're not a frat boy. You just look stupid. I hope there was a slideshow of me wearing backwards hats during that but like I'm don't do it don't do it <laughs> number four I'm gonna be talking about periods so if you don't want to hear about that skip to the next one but you can stop your period without going on blockers and without going on testosterone and I'm gonna tell you how this is birth control However, unlike most birth control, most birth control is estrogen, which we are not trying to put more of into our bodies. We do not want our fucking tits to get bigger. We're not putting more estrogen into our bodies. We're not doing that. So I was asking about birth control with my doctor because I wanted to like lighten my period and I wanted to like, because I knew birth control could do that. And I was like, but I don't want to go on an estrogen based one. He was like, oh, take this. It's a progesterone based one. And progesterone is also a female hormone. However, it doesn't actually like change anything in you like estrogen does. Like trans women don't take progesterone because it's just for like reproductive stuff. So you are technically adding more of a female hormone to you. But like it, it's not going to like make you more curvy like an estrogen based birth control will. But the great thing about this is this, for me, completely stopped my period. I've not had a period since I started taking this like three years ago. Like, I'm n I've literally not had one. I will occasionally start spotting every couple of months, maybe. But that's about it. Like, literally, besides that, nothing. Nothing. Can you stop drinking for a fucking minute? I'm trying to talk here. Yeah, I've not had a single period. The, the thing is, when you first start taking it, um, unlike estrogen-based birth controls, this is a pill every single day. Most birth controls, you're not actually taking a pill every day. It's mostly sugar pills that you take to like keep the habit. This is a pill every day. So you need to take it at the exact same time every day when you first start out. So I'd say like for the first six months, you need to be taking it at the same time every day. But then after that, like, I will, like, sleep in for, like, a couple of hours and then, like, take it and I'll be fine. But I've been on it for, like, three years. So this, it will stop your period. It will. I don't remember how long it took initially. I think three to six months. But, like, I literally have not had a period since. Like, never. Never. This is a fucking miracle worker. I don't know if you can be on this and testosterone at the same time. I'm gonna have to find that out. I'll let you know. I'll keep you updated if I can still continue taking this when I go on testosterone. I would assume you could because the thing is testosterone isn't a contraceptive you can still get pregnant when you're on testosterone so like you would need to be on some form of birth control and testosterone at the same time like if you're obviously having penetrative sex but i would have to check i will find out but if you are pre-t and you don't want a period this is like your fucking solution just take 
a progesterone based birth control it's not a guarantee that it will stop your period though it will either significantly lighten it to the point where it's like barely an inconvenience or it could completely get rid of it um i'm speaking from my experience mine is gone tip number five is yes you should get rats i know you're thinking about it because for some reason every single trans mass person on the face of the earth wants to get rats oh there she goes um, yes, you should do it. They're amazing. Um, this is your sign to stop considering it and just do it. Just get rats. Number six is a tip I've never used, um, but I, I know what it is, so I can tell you about it. Um, I don't pack, but if you do want to pack, Etsy is the place to go. Because not only on Etsy, there are cloth packers for so cheap, but also I've seen people make packing underwear for you that are significantly cheaper than like Rodeo's or whatever. And the thing with Etsy and the like packaging and stuff is it's just stuff coming from people's houses. So like if you order a packer from like another website, like it could be like dildo.com website. Whereas if you order like a homemade one on Etsy, it won't say that. It'll just be like from Jim. I don't know why Jim's making packers, but yeah. So Etsy is a good place to get packers and packing underwear, but sewing is really easy. So I think if you really wanted to, you could make your own. If you're that determined, sewing is not difficult. I learned it in like 30 minutes um, to sew patches and stuff. So I would assume making packing underwear is not that hard. But yeah, there are packers and stuff on Etsy. Now, the next three are all about binding. Because again, I have been binding for many of years now. So I have picked up some top tier tips. Number seven is you can swim in a binder. You, you, just, you can. There's nothing wrong. I've only ever done it in a GC2B binder. Um, and... So I would only really recommend doing it with that because that's the only thing that I know works. Um, but you can swim in it, it's fine. Obviously don't be like competitively swimming in it. Like I wouldn't recommend it for like intense swimming, but like if you're like at the beach or like a water park, a hotel pool, whatever, like casual fun swimming, you can absolutely swim in a binder. Like you just, and just let it dry afterwards. Like it's fine, it's, it's fine. <laughs> As long as it's not like you're not like intensely working out, like you would, like you don't run in a binder, you don't work out in a binder, but like you can totally get your binder doused in water in a pool. You can wear your binder. Like I see all these videos like tips on swimming, literally just wear your binder in a swim shirt. Like it's fine. If it's a GC2B binder, you'll probably be fine. I've never tested it with any other type of binder. I only know what I know, and that is if you're wearing a GC2B binder, you can fucking swim in it. It's fine. Number eight is similar to this. You can also machine wash a GC2B binder. You can do that. You can't machine dry it. Do not put it in the dryer. Let it air dry. But I have, I have machine washed every single GC2B binder I've ever owned. They're all fine. They all came out fine. They didn't like stretch out or anything. I just let them air dry. You can machine wash them with all your other clothes. It's literally fine. Like I've never had a single issue with it. Like, yeah, I just put it in with, like, my other clothes, and then I'm fine. It's, it's fine. Like, nothing, nothing happens. You don't have to do the whole binder stew thing. You can literally, if it's a GC2B binder, I don't know about other types of binders. I only, because GC2B, I, I know a GC2B binder, it is perfectly safe to put it in your washing machine. All right, so the next, this is my real binding hack tip. This is a GC2B binder, right? This is what it looks like. I'm wearing my black one right now. Now. When you're wearing like a t-shirt or something, unless it's like a perfectly fitted t-shirt, these straps will show, these will show. And one solution to this is if you're like me and you only really wear black, you get a black binder so that it matches your black t-shirt. Like you can't even tell what's binder and what's t-shirt. Maybe you can, maybe you can't, but like it's not obvious. This, however, this doesn't perfectly match my skin tone as you can see. So when I'm wearing like a, a blue shirt or a gray shirt or whatever, this is obvious when you see it. So. Here's what I did. So this is another binder, obviously. I cut the straps. As you can see, I cut it here. So whenever I wear this one with the shirt, the straps are smaller and they don't show. And so I obviously didn't cut around the actual binding material, just like this spandexy material. Um, and it's fine. And it works perfectly fine. It doesn't bind any worse. I mean, this one does because it's loose because I've owned it for so long. But it's perfectly fine. And it actually, I own so many binders, but the Racerback binder, ignore the hair dye on it. This one, these straps actually come in way closer than the normal GC2B binder actually. So like, do not get the Racerback, it's not worth it. It's also really uncomfortable. These straps are really uncomfortable. Like the Racerback is not at all worth it. Just, just cut the straps so that they don't go 
in as much and so you won't see them so yeah especially during summer this is the most prevalent because like any other time you can just be wearing like a hoodie or like a button-up but like during summer if you're wearing like a t-shirt or something then like your straps are gonna show and if you don't want them to you just cut it you just cut it or you could get a black one and that'll blend in with your clothing or you could get a white one it this really only applies to like the skin colored ones and the like color color ones because like that doesn't look like an undershirt like you can probably be fine with the white one underneath like a shirt showing or a black one underneath the shirt showing but like anything else that that's gonna look like a bra or a binder or something so although like again like I'm perfectly comfortable with the black one showing even if like I don't know it just depends it just depends like some people are fine but like yeah if you don't like your binder strap showing just just cut it just don't cut the white fit because that's what actually is binding but you can cut the other bits, at least for a GC2B binder. All these only apply to GC2B binders because those are the only ones I've ever owned. And our final tip, which is arguably the most important one, I would say even more important than the backwards hat, don't be a true scum. Uh, I did that for two and a half years. I did it for too long and it is not good for you. you you're, you're gonna like, you, it's tempting. It's tempting to be a true scum, I know it is. But don't do it because you're objectively wrong by the way it's just factually incorrect but yeah don't do it you'll be much happier when you've like let go of that and yeah that that was that was my tips for my trans boys and trans enemies are my my collarbones are like fully out oh my god i'm a harlot